Lizzie T Radio Show. Canadian Show, North American Radio Show, and now Worldwide Show. The Lizzie T. Blog Talk Radio Show. She wants to know who you are, what you do, your contact info, anything new? And now, welcome the amazing Lizzie T. Thank you, thank you. Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome, everyone. I am your host and the producer of the Lizzie T. Show. And I'm saying Lizzie T. because show, because we have radio and also now we are uh, on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. So for you that uh, are in Toronto, this show is the, the Lizzie T. Show uh, radio show is worldwide. We have over 10,000 listeners all over the world. And uh, But if you are in the Toronto or Ontario area. I've actually have gone as far as New York taping. Uh, so if you're interested, please send us an email at radio at Liz T dot C A. And today we have we have prepared for you today an amazing, amazing show. As always, how can I disappoint my listeners? We have today prepared another artist. Before I bring my fantastic guest on. I want to take a couple of minutes of your time, of my, this time, that I always do. It's just I need to thank my listeners. And the reason being is because without my listeners and without you, I could not, I cannot, this would not be possible. And uh, can you believe this show? This show has been listening right now. In Australia, so good morning to my Australia listeners. In South America, Central America, Jamaica, the Netherlands, and here through our beautiful uh, provinces, especially in Calgary, uh, to also in the United States. We have had listeners and guests from Washington, D.C., Texas, Kansas. And believe it or not, my show has reached all over Italy. We had a, a guest um and a listener, uh, an artist from Italy, and now we've gotten requests from Turkey. So this is amazing. And this, I had, I, pre- I planned for this, and I prepared for this, but it's really, when it's here, it's unexpected, and I'm very overwhelmed, I'm very honored, and I'm very happy for this. If you're interested in being on my show, you can always email us. We have revamped our website, so there's a form on my website, which is lizzyt.com, or you can send me an email at radio at lizzyt.ca. My email is radio at lizzyt.ca. An amazing show for you today. You are here for a treat. Some of you, and most of you in Canada and the U.S. and Mexico, know this fellow. And uh, he, I have to admit, I've been following him. I love him, and uh, he is one of my favorite people in the whole world. I've been following since I was a little girl. I remember when I first came to Canada back in 92, um, the first exposure that I had to Canada was skating. And there was the Olympic area era and obviously this guy was there. I'm talking about everyone. You have seen me promoting uh, this fellow for the last few weeks and here it is. He's talking to us and he has a very busy schedule so we will not not miss any minute with him. So before I bring him on, here's a little bio. <laughs> Elvis Stoico. Elvis was born on March 22, 1972. Canadian figured skater. He is a three-time world champion in 1994, 1995, and 1997. Two-time Olympic silver medalist in 1994 and in 1998 and seven-time 
Canadian Champion, 1994, 1996, 2000, and 2002. Stoico was born in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada, to a Hungarian mother and a Slovenian father. And it was named after, yes, Elvis Presley, of whom his parents were huge fans. His parents arrived in Canada in 1955. Stoico grew up in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Stoico began skating at the age of four and won his first trophy when he was only six. As a child, he also studied karate, earning a black belt when he was only 16. He has incorporated martial arts moves into his skating. He competed in the 2005 WKA Canadian Championship and placed first in the Chinese Martial Arts Division. He also likes to ride dirt bikes. Stoico has written a book about his career called In Seoul, and he has been involved with Ronald McDonald Children's Charity in Canada. Stoico settled in Mexico in 2001, and in 2010, he married a Mexican figure skater. From the ice to Broadway, Elvis is in the building. Elvis Stoico, everybody, two-time Olympic champ. And now you're busy training for Broadway. Yep. How does one prepare for this? We know you've got the singing chops, if people at home don't know. You've always had the voice and the training. But to take it from the ice to the stage is a different thing in Chicago, the longest running play ever. Yeah. Tell us about your role and how this happened, how it came to be. Well, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Steve Disson who does uh, a few of the skating shows in the States for television, and he knows a producer uh, of Chicago. And uh, they've had different actors come in, come in and play the, the, um, the position of, of Billy Flynn, the character of Billy Flynn. Uh, Billy Zane's played it. Uh, uh, Richard Ray, Gere on film. Yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus. So they, they, she spoke to Steve Disson and said, we're looking for uh, maybe a skater. Do you have a skater that might be able to do it? And he said, well, Elvis has been on stage with Grease before. He's got a background. I think he'd be great. So I did um, a, a, a small audition tape back in, in the summer. And I sent it in, and, and uh, they, they said, no, we can work with this. This is great. You know, and I told them, I said, by no means am I a professional. But, you know, performance is performance. And, and without further ado, everyone, let's welcome you that are listening to us all over the world, that amazing, beautiful, fantastic Elvis Stoiko. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello there. Alice, and welcome, welcome, and welcome to the Lizzie T Radio Show. What an honor! I have to confess, I have to be honest with you. I'm shaking. I'm nervous. To to us is just an, a huge, uh, enormous pleasure to have you here with us. Now, Elvis, I've been following, as I mentioned earlier, uh, your career since I came to Canada, because really, you were the first thing that I actually started noticing about skating, and uh, my goodness, you are one of our favorite here in our home. So, one thing I wanted to ask you, for people that are listening to other parts of the world, uh, Elvis, was it always your desire, when, when you were a child, to to learn how to skate, or is it something that your mom, your dad took you when you were four years old, three years old, and there was just a routine? How did that all start? It well, it started back when I was about uh, two and a half years old, watching uh, mm. television uh, and watching figure skating, and uh, I was pointing at the television, saying, "I want to do that, I want to do that." And kids are kids are into everything, so my parents thought it was just a phase. And uh, they finally took me when I was four years old, but yet my mom really had no idea where to go. Uh, my parents didn't uh, know anything really about figure skating other than the fact that, you know, they used to watch it and, and love watching the skaters, but um, they really didn't know where to go. So my mom went to, to our neighbor, um, and across the way, we owned a 50-acre farm up in Queensville, Ontario, and uh, they said, you know, there's a, there's a skating rink in Newmarket. 
and uh, you know, let's let's see if we can sign him up for you know, learn the skate program, and and uh, you know, see how he likes it. Uh, so my my mom finally took me when I was about four years old, and um, from that point, I just sort of trained a little bit, uh, skated just for fun during the winter time, and uh, eventually, I just sort of picked it up and it got better and better, and I started competing at the age of six. And uh, from there, wow. it just started to grow and grow, and and uh, you know, it went from there. Did you actually like it? Is, is this something? Because I have two girls, and I've put them in different activities, and they kind of like it at the beginning, but then at the end, oh, I'm tired, I'm bored, I don't like it anymore. Did you actually like it, or it was a routine, something to do? Well, it was something at the beginning. I, I enjoy um, I enjoy individual sports. So, you know, whether it be mm-hmm. the skating or when I was in the dirt bikes, I'm, I'm doing a lot of kart, kart racing and car racing now. Uh, it, individual when I'm out there doing my thing, and I like to – I love learning. Um, I like to test my skills and be competitive with myself. And skating was a great uh, opportunity for me to do that. I wanted to, like, spin and jump and, and uh, do all the athletic stuff. And I I really enjoyed it. Like I really enjoyed uh, pushing the envelope. As a young kid, I just wanted to to, to do more and more and more of it. And um, you know, it, it was something in my competitive nature that that kind of spurred me on. And uh, you know, in anything that you know, someone that competes at a high level, you got to have a passion for it. Or you, you know, <laughs> when those times that yeah, I was tired. You know, in the middle of like a height in my career, yeah, I was tired. But you know, I made myself go to the rink and. And, and dug deep and, and, and pulled that out. And you can only be at the top when you kind of yeah, go to the rink when you sometimes don't want to go. But you got to have a love for it or it just isn't uh, – it just won't work, you know, that way. And, and there's a lot of skaters I met over the years that, you know, they were talented but really didn't want to, you know, push to, to the level, uh, you know, to get to, you know, that super, super high level. But they just enjoyed skating. And and that's and that's a great thing too because skating is, is something that – you know, you can get in shape, uh, get your body in shape with and, and um, you know, just something to enjoy. You don't have to be, you know, going to the Olympic Games if you don't want to. And I think that's what helps with you, Elvis, that you were able not only to push the envelope, but then you got rewarded for it. And I think that's really what, as as an entrepreneur, as a person in, in the radio and the media, when I get success, in one thing, and then I can jump in the other. I, man, I love what I do. I couldn't think of doing anything else, and I think that's the same thing for you. Now, did it ever cross your mind, Elvis, that you will be winning so many medals, you'll be doing so many shows all over uh, the United States, Canada, I've, uh, you've gone to Europe, I don't know where else you I mean, you've been all over the world. cross your mind that from – going to a little skating rink uh, here in Ontario to what it is your life now? It's when you're that young, you don't, you don't really think of it that way. I mean, for me anyways, I, I just wanted to skate. I just wanted to experience what it would be like to, to be on the ice. And, and, um, each step of the way you, you, uh, you know, gain a little bit more experience. Uh, you learn more about it. And it was not until I was about nine or ten years old that it actually clicked in my head that, you know, maybe I, you know, maybe I could make the Olympic team one day. And uh, you know, some of the coaches that had the coaches that I had worked with me had said, you know, to my parents that I had some talent, and you know, I, I was a hard worker and I listened, and you know, I was I was very coachable. And uh, you know, it was something that um, I always kept close to my heart that it wasn't so much just about the winning; it was about the experience. And if you really love what mm-hmm. you're doing, you never really know how far you can take it if you just, you know, open up. Uh, what 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 becomes tough is when you start really only focusing on the win and the real competitive mm-hmm. aspect only. You got to have a balance, and what and that's what burns a lot of athletes out, not just skaters. Is it just it's just too much pressure to win, 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 win all the time instead of the actual enjoyment of the activity itself. It's like I use an example when I'm when I'm racing that. Yeah, I'd love to win, but just being in the pack and being involved in the race, the actual moment of the competition or the race, is where you get your thrill. Um, yeah, and the thrill of victories at the end, and sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't, but it's about the moment that you're in. And um, I think that's the, the biggest thing that I learned over the years because 
being at that top level and, and people expecting you to win and, and being at the top, it, it's it's not an easy place to be. And and pro athletes know this experience, and and it's hard. I mean, it, it's not a not a um, something that I that is very comfortable. <laughs> and you have to find a place in your in your mind where you can just be that kid again, even at that high level. And I always try to tap into that. Why did I start skating? It was the love for being on the ice and that enjoyment. Mm-hmm. What would you say, Elvis, that it it was one of your highest highlights in your career? What would you say that something that you will ever, ever forget, perhaps the first gold medal, perhaps um, getting married, uh, moving to another country, what would you say was the biggest highlight in your career? Uh, the biggest highlight oh, in my in my in my skating career, I think, uh, was the fact it wasn't so much just about uh, the win, but I think the big thing was is that I didn't uh, I didn't conform. Um, I had a lot of people in the skating community that wanted me to change uh, and just become another one of the artistic quote unquote skaters that did ballet and and they wanted me to do more of that style and skate to like a, a more uh, classical approach. And I just was like, that's just not me. I didn't agree with that. Uh, I've seen skaters that have have, have had over the years an incredible um, like personality, and then they would get changed by the system because in order to mm-hmm. win, you have to be a classically trained skater. And I'm not saying to take that out. I'm just saying that skating can be so many different things. It can have so many different personalities. But if you end up making it look all the same, it becomes boring, and you're pushing away uh, a different market of people that come to want to watch and enjoy it. And for me, I just I just said no. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the way I view skating for me, and uh, I continue to do that. And, and it was hard; like it was not an easy thing because I had a lot of people um, uh, working against me. But then I had a lot of supporters as well that would come out and say, "You know, you're doing the right thing." And whether it be fans or people that were in skating, they were saying, "Thank you. You're a breath of fresh air. You're you're following what's mm-hmm. true to you." And and we really enjoy that part of it. And it was not an easy. It was not an easy road. It was very difficult. It, I always use it as the uh, uh, the theory of the chickens. <laughs> when you have a big a big uh, field of chickens, you're going to see them all pecking in one area, and one chicken will leave and go peck in another area. A couple of chickens will mm-hmm. come over and, bug, and peck that chicken to get it to go back. If the chicken is weak, it'll go back to the group. But if the chicken stays, yeah, it'll lose some feathers, but eventually... One by one, the other chickens will come over and come to that area. So it, it's it's a matter. It, we end up doing that in our own society. It, it's funny enough that if you see someone kind of going their own direction away from the main group, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's just natural for them to feel, oh, am I doing something wrong? Well, let's go get that person and bring him back to our group because we feel more comfortable if he's here and not changing what we've already set, what we've done for years. But then, if you just realize that I'm not trying to change the sport i just want to add another dynamic to it you know i'm not competing with them it's it's more or less to show uh, have an open mind and and i think for me the biggest thing was not conforming to that and and uh, you know after that i realized you know what that's very much in everywhere in life it's true and and that's one thing i love about you is that you always are stay true to yourself and that's very rare to see a an, an artist uh, or a performer or or somebody like uh, or, or a celebrity. Uh, many things happen; they change, they they go through other faces in their life, and some some faces are not good faces, and some faces are good. And, and in your case, I love that you always stay true to yourself, and that's phenomenal. That's fantastic, and I, that's what I think it keeps you growing, keeps you changing. And on that on that note, um, I noticed that you've going through uh you've gone through uh skating uh to racing uh bikes uh to now you're racing cars C- can you talk a little bit about that this is if you i know you continue doing your skating but uh you also racing uh competitively uh in, in with cars yeah yeah well right now um i'm racing go karts high level go karts which is uh they're <laughs> very quick it's a lot of the a lot of the big uh, F1 drivers and IndyCar drivers and NASCAR drivers, they still train on these on these go-karts. And, and I'm training right now, but uh, at the national level, international level. Um, and it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to eventually race cars at a very high level. And um, I, I, didn't, I got started back when I was about seven years old with, with motorbikes. And my neighbor, actually, the neighbor that helped my mom find a place for me to skate, 
son used to race dirt bikes. And I used to go to the house and oh. watch him race uh, around with his buddies. And, and I ended up uh, getting a bike later on. And, and um, I did in the summers. Now, I, ne- I didn't get into racing bikes because during the time of skating, uh, I didn't want to get hurt racing. So I, what I did was I ended up doing a lot of racing with some of the best drivers around in California and North America and really enjoyed, and really enjoyed that. But later on, I used to, um, I used to go to the track. I got invited to come to a track and do some performance driving with cars. And I fell in love with it. And this was back in the mid-90s. And I had an offer. Uh, they wanted to, um, uh, a couple of guys got together, and they offered me a spot to be able to race a Canadian cast car, which is now all together is called NASCAR uh, in Canada as well as the U.S. But they wanted to train me to get me set up and race some ca- uh, cast car series. Uh, but I was already mm-hmm. uh, competing at a high level in skating, and I don't think my sponsors would have been happy if I jumped in a race car. Uh, so... I always had that in the back of my mind, and and um, back in uh, 2011, I told my wife um, when I, when we were living in Mexico, we we moved back to Canada now. But uh, we, uh, I was talking to her, I said I really want to start, you know, going towards my goal of of racing cars. So I started racing go karts. Mm-hmm. In the last number of years, got to uh, number two in Canada last year in my division, um, and uh, it's been growing and growing, and and. It's something that I just I absolutely love. It's I've always been mechanically inclined. I love the technical aspect, the physics of it, and uh, I just love the sensation. And it's something that um, it's always been a passion, and uh, I want to continue doing. And it's something I can continue doing for the next you know ten, fifteen, twenty years. And uh, I love it very, very much. And and uh, you know skating is still always there. It's part of my life, and I'll still be right. doing shows. And uh, but the competitive aspect is always in me. I love that challenge and and. It allows an outlet for me that way. It's true, and and if I know you, you probably which obviously I don't know you, but if I uh, can see by your determination and and whatever is it that you do, you're probably going to be doing great at it. And medals are going to be coming up your way, and you're going to be doing this for a while. And this is the next phase of your of your career, which I find that is phenomenal. Switching from one extreme to another, kind of. Now you also, as you heard from my previous bio you were involved on a play chicago what you're not skating you're not racing you're dancing and singing what's that all about well um i got the part through um uh, well through steve disson i had mentioned in the little uh, interview that you had played uh he's done a number of uh shows for skating in the states and, and you the producer the producer is looking to to have a skater come and play the part uh one of the parts in, in the show and and Steve Disson had pointed out that I had been singing and some acting before, so I did the audition uh, last year and, and uh, sent the audition in, and they, they really liked what I did. And, uh, you know, my background, my father was a classically trained tenor, and he worked with me. I also worked with a, a lady here in Toronto, a uh, high-level um, singer who had done classical, classical stuff. So I did some work with her uh, just on bass and, and all the classical training, and, and uh I ended up getting the part and just enjoyed it. It was just a wonderful experience to, to, to be actually on Broadway to play Billy Flynn. I was there for a week, and then I played at the Princess of Wales Theater. Uh, Mervish was fantastic. And and, uh, and then mm-hmm. eventually we ended up getting uh, – this year we're doing a stage show, uh, Ice wow. on Stage at the Princess, Princess of Wales Theater, uh, end, of, end of December, beginning of January. That, that connection that I had with Mervish is, and they decided to do a, a skating show. And uh, it's been a wonderful ride. Like, there's been so many great uh, networking communications between people and, and uh, creating different shows and different things, variety of different things. It is just, uh, you know, being cre- just being very creative. And, and I'm just really happy that I had that opportunity to, you know, learn from the best, too, being around people on Broadway, the best of the best, and, and uh, doing the acting and the singing and, you know, everything else to go with it. So it's like cross it off my bucket list and, and you know, on to the next thing, which is great. Wow, you you must have all your list on your bucket list pretty much filled because I don't know anybody that can say check check check. Now is the uh, Broadway Chicago show that's pretty much done over? You're not going to go to another season or, or another uh, road show? Well, they had spoken last year about uh, bringing me back again uh, for the next season. Right. Season and. Uh, have to figure out timing wise because I have a racing season and also a skating season to kind of work out but I said yeah I'm open to coming back and, and doing a little bit more uh, with the group and uh, they, they, the cast was wonderful they they really took me in as, the, as one of their own and I really enjoyed it so they they, they really liked what I did and, and I was very happy 
you know, being very professional there and, and, uh, you know, taking care and, and the training of it too. I spent a lot of time rehearsing and, and, uh, you know, they really enjoyed that. And, and, um, uh, you know, hopefully next year I'll be able to come back or year after. And uh, it, with, with the Chicago group, what I found is that the, it's a big family. Whoever's part of that family, they keep them. And uh, we'll call upon them maybe in five, ten years. They'll call upon you to play a part again. And, and I've heard that with people where wow. they, they were out for a little while and they bring them back in uh, to do either on Broadway or touring or what have you. So, uh, you know, it's really great. I, and I like that variety. It's, it's I look at life as, as experiences. And it's not just going to, you know, a nine to five job. And, and for me, I, I couldn't do that. I, I love to experience life and go out there and, you know, and it's taking a risk too, because, you know, economically it's tough mm-hmm. because we all want to have that security in life. And uh, if you can let, if you can let go of that and, and really trust that the universe will give you what you need, um, you can experience more things. And, and that's one thing that I, I think I learned through, you know, through my skating and, and through my martial arts and, and, uh, you know, continue to grow is to experience different things in life and, and try to carry that and show that to people that, you know, you can go after your passions and you can be successful. Um, you know, sometimes there's going to be a little bit of a bumpy road, but usually that bumpy road is trying to tell you something and it just be, be very, very mindful and aware of what's happening around you and the, and the signs that come, come in your face. And, and, uh, you know, I, I just sort of went with it. I, yeah, I was nervous and scared when I first thought about being on stage on Broadway, but you know, I, I mm-hmm. took it and uh, went for it, and, and it was one of the one of the greatest uh, uh, experiences I've had in my life so far. And, and you jumping ahead of myself here because I always ask, do you have any words of inspiration for my listeners? And you just did that. I unbelievable how you just think ahead of what I'm going to say and what I'm going to ask. <laughs> Elvis, I can definitely uh, want to make sure that I book myself to uh, see you uh, in December with the uh, uh, the show that you're going to be doing, The Ice and Skate with Elvis. That's going to be phenomenal. And uh, for the people that are listening in uh, for the Broadway show, if they don't call you back in the next year, uh, well, I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, they're, they're missing out, and I'm sure that if they know what they're doing, they will call you back. Uh, this is your host and the producer of the Lizzie T Show. And if you're listening, uh, my goodness, I've been promoting this fellow for the last two weeks. And uh, you have a treat that you have no idea, Elvis Stoico, the medalist. And I had the opportunity to meet him very, very briefly um, about maybe six months ago when I went to a presentation for Kenyan Water. Now, I don't know if many of you know what that is. Uh, but uh, it's very rare for an artist or celebrity to endorse something uh, and tell other people how good this product or this thing or this is it. So Elva has been endorsing uh, Cancun Water, and I was very impressed by the presentation. So Elvis, do you want to talk a little bit about what is Cancun Water? Yeah, it's... it's um. I met a gentleman a few years back in 2009. Both my wife did uh, here at the CNE when the CNE was going on, and and uh, I was having trouble with the sh- with lactic acid buildup. I was having trouble cleaning up my uh, system. And uh, one of my friends told me about uh, this water, this amazing water, and and uh, so I met the gentleman named Alan Sachs uh, from from Vegas, and he gave me some some water to try out. And I couldn't believe the difference in 24 hours, then 48 hours, and then a week later. And uh, basically, Kangen water means bringing back to origin. It's a Japanese term. Mm. Uh, it comes from a machine, uh, a company called Enagic. And uh, they make the machines in Japan. They're medical-grade machines. It's basically a water ionizer that changes the, the structure of the water to make it alkaline. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also makes the water uh, micro-clustered, a uh, short, short version of it, basically, it's easier for your body to absorb into your into your cell membranes, and uh, as well as being very the antioxidant properties. Everyone's talking about antioxidants these days. Uh, the antioxidant properties are phenomenal, um, and being able to, to uh, rid the body of free radicals, especially for athletes that are trying to um, recover from training. I always tell uh, people when I you know when they ask me questions about nutrition, which I've I, I've, mm-hmm. I'm very much into uh, holistic healing and things like that, and 
And just because you're in shape doesn't mean you're uh, healthy because you take right. a, a big pounding on the body, right? It's really, really important that you, you do the recovery and, and, and look at what, you know, the types of food we eat organic. Uh, you know, my wife and I are very conscious of the, the chemicals that are in, whether it be, uh, you know, deodorants and fluoride that's in your toothpaste and, and all of that stuff. And the, the water is one of the, is our, is our staple. We have it every, uh, every day. It's our base for everything around it. Um, whether we take supplements mm-hmm. or whatever we're eating, uh, the water is the main, our main, our main base. And, uh, the Kangen water is just, is just phenomenal. Uh, the biggest thing I noticed with the water, um, for 25 years, I, I had an issue with my skin. I had a really bad, uh, acne issue. I had cystic acne on my back. I had it on my neck. Really? I went, I had it started when I was 13. And a lot of people didn't know. They only saw a little bit on my face during my, even into my 20s. But I had it continually into my 30s. And uh, through the research, it was an ongoing, almost a lifelong uh, search to try to find an answer. You know, I had I'd gone to doctors with uh, tetracycline and Accutane, which is, is horrible stuff. It, it, it ruins your, your organs. And you know, I've heard people with kidney failure and all sorts of stuff with this, the, the, the medication. So I wanted to find out what the answer was. Well, I found out milk was a big problem for me. Uh, so I cut out milk mm-hmm. about 20 years ago. Uh, I don't drink milk anymore. I watch the, di- uh, the dairy products. And then I found out that uh, anything that was carbonated was a lot of issues. So I haven't, I haven't had anything carbonated or had any, any soda pop or anything like that for at least uh, 10 years. And I, com- wow. I stayed away from it completely. And it helped my skin. It didn't clear it up completely. But then from there, uh, through you know, sending it out to the universe and and I started meeting the right people, talking about pH balance. And I kept hearing about this this pH and alkalinity a number of years ago before I even got onto the water. And uh, once I discovered that, simply enough to make a long story short, what I found out was that my body was trying to get rid of toxins through all the lactic acid buildup from the years of training. Um, my body couldn't make it couldn't really build the fat around me to store. Uh, all the toxin. That's basically what happens when people gain weight. It's basically over toxicity of the body and then you end up storing all the toxin in the fat cells. Well, I couldn't make the fat because I was burning it off. So the only way it could get out right. was it was pushing it through my pushing it through my skin. So my body was just trying to detox itself. And I realized that anything on the skin really isn't from the outside. It's everything is from the inside. Well once inside. I started getting on the water, the first two weeks the first two weeks my skin got worse. And then I kept pushing through. It's called the healing crisis. The body tries to detox. And then within a month and a half, my skin was clear. And I can honestly say it was the only only thing that absolutely cleared my skin. And my skin got healthier. Uh, My hair grows faster. My nails grow faster. Uh, Our dogs love the water. It is absolutely phenomenal. So the other day, my, my wife also on Facebook created uh, another page that's just, it's an old social page, but it's, all about all the all, this, all the nutrition stuff that I have learned over the years and what has helped what has helped me and what what I can give back and advice to people that are looking for a, an alternative way of trying to heal something or or trying to the people that I've met uh, I just came from a foot detox as we talk right now uh, just came from there I uh, do also those detoxes I, it's a special ionizer uh, that cleans through the feet and pulls out all the toxins in the body. So there's a lot of different things that I've discovered over the years that I like to share with people. So we have that on Facebook, uh, and it's, it's right. uh, you know a page for that, and and uh, it's been it's been wonderful. The Kong and water is, is phenomenal. It's something that uh, you know it, it's a wonderful thing that can help uh, not only yourself but pets and 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 uh, animals as well. Interesting. And I will have everyone uh, the link for the fan page uh, that Elvis saw can get water for you to get more information um, also obviously there will be uh, the link for his website and uh, I don't know if somebody's listening to us and I've had listeners in Ukraine uh, Europe everywhere and if you also need to get in touch with Elvis uh, his uh, website will be there for more information Elvis I cannot thank you enough for sharing uh you know, a couple of minutes, and we're going over, and I know I promised you that it will not take long, and I'm so sorry, but I, I appreciate you sticking out with me here uh, through the show. This is this is amazing. 
This is fantastic, and uh, I know that uh, you are listening to us all over the world. I really appreciate his words of inspiration, his experiences, and uh, now he is promoting Kangen Water, which is phenomenal. If you want more information, again, the fan page will be there. So thank you so much. Any last word, Elvis? Oh, I just, uh, you know, for people out there I just uh, that have supported me over the years, I just want to thank them. They've been uh, wonderful, and I'm continually doing things in skating, and uh, we, we, my wife and I have moved back to Canada. Uh, now still we're living in Richmond Hill now, and, and uh, you know, just follow me on Facebook. Uh, I've got uh, a fan page there that you can like and follow that. Uh, my website, again, elvisstoico.ca, I've changed it uh, around, and, and there's more stuff available there. Uh, and uh, Instagram and uh, the real Estoico on Twitter, all of that information is there available. And you know, with all of that, uh, people can get in touch with me and and uh, you know, ask questions and so forth. And you know, I'll try my best to to reconnect. And and I uh, just want to thank everyone for the support over the years. Well, thank you, Elvis. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you. Lizzie T. Radio Show.